All right, so here I am in Photopea with the brush tool set to black, set to 100% opacity, with a brush that is a simple brush. I'm gonna set it to probably about 50 pixels at a hardness of 90. And I have the brush set to be about 70% smoothing. The higher the percentage, the more it's gonna smooth for you. And I have it set to be tapered with pressure which is amazing because even though this is a browser-based program, because it's an HTML5 browser, I can do these beautifully smooth lines thick to thin if I want within Photopea. That's something that Photoshop doesn't support. It supports the thick to thin pressure sensitivity for your tablet, but it doesn't support the smoothing while you do it. Okay, so with those tools, I'm on my own ink layer, right? On top of my onion skinned reference, I can now zoom in and really start to digitally ink this. Ah. Now, the problem with browsers is they sometimes lag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the resolution, the image size. I always scan at 600 pixels per inch for sketches for inking. But then I'm now going to reduce it and resample it to just 300. And it's a small sketch. It's only about four by four inches. But this is going to get turned into vectors. And you'll see that my brush size changes with my resolution size. So now I'm going to take it down to about 25 pixels. That's as big as it can get if I push really hard, right? But with my usual pressure, you can do different tests. That's about my line weight. And now this allows me to ink it just like I would a coloring book by hand. So I'm trying to show you these different ways. But then it's catching a little bit and not showing me. So depending on how the browser base is working for you, yeah, it's kind of falling behind. But it's great to have the smoothing and it's great to have the pressure sensitivity. Now, remember that I took my refined image and I saved it as a JPEG as a test to vectorize. So this test to vectorize image was from a scanned image of inks. But because it was, you know, inks on paper, it was pretty bumpy and wavy. So I did all those things in in Photoshop to kind of clean it up. Now I'll open that in Illustrator. And when you open it in Illustrator, because it's a raster file, click on it and it will come in with some raster options. And if you don't see those raster options right away, this is the newest window in Illustrator. Go to Window and go to Workspace and go to Essentials Classic. Just because there's so many functions in Illustrator, it tends, the new version tends to hide these. So if you go to Essentials Classic, you'll see what I need you to see. You click on it, you'll see an Image Trace option. It used to be called Live Trace, right? And it has a drop down next to it. Click on the drop down, and what you want to pick is a black and white logo option. And then you can see how this could have been useful when we were doing our black and white yo uh, logos. Okay, now if I zoom in, it looks like a vector. But it is not a vector yet. This is what's called vectorizing or live tracing or image tracing within a vector program like Illustrator. 
it's it's just a preview of what the logo can look like to actually get it or what the vector could look like to get it to be a vector i need to click on the options next to the tracing result to get the and then i want to click on the triangle to get the advanced options so there's a lot of steps here but they're worth it the very first thing i need to do is say ignore all the whites because i don't want white vector shapes i only want black vector shapes so why does that matter so that it looks like this instead of like this, right? Because we just want the, the line art. Then I want to go in and I can play with these settings. So notice that some of my lines got broken, like the in there, the edge of the eye. It actually looks pretty darn good, but I can get it closer by adjusting these settings as it converts my pixels to a vector. So I can say, um, allow for a little more noise, you know, smaller shapes, more corners, and I have preview set, so it's going to preview as I make these changes. And allow for the lines to be thicker. To have fewer corners means that they'll be smoother, but sometimes it will round out things you don't want it to round out. So these are your live tracing options. And I did my best to make it so it was a good candidate for live tracing uh, simply by thinking about it as cut out of black paper. All right, once you're happy with it and you have ignore white checked, then you click on expand up at the top and that will turn it into vectors. So now I have anchor points and vectors. And the great thing about that is that I can clean it up in the way that I cleaned up my logo. So I can use my handy dandy pencil tool, which under the Essentials Classic is, is with the smooth tool underneath the brush, not grouped with the brush. Whoops. And then I can use my um, stylus. And I could set my pencil to different smoothings, right? I'm going to keep it pretty smooth. And I'm going to even some of this out. Now, this is not logo design. Your illustration does not need to be as clean as your logo. But of course, you want it to look as good as you can. And for the man-made components, like the helmet, I want that to look pretty smooth. So I can use the tools in Illustrator, much like the smoothing brush option in PhotoP, to soften and smooth that original ink sketch that I scanned in. So this is a technique I often do. I ink by hand, I scan it, I clean it up, and then I live trace it. And I like that method for my work because it preserves kind of the, the character of it, the personality of my, of my draw, drawn line. But it's going to make some mistakes. So when you have connections you don't want, you use the eraser. You can set the eraser to be different sizes. I want pretty small. If I can do a point size. There we go. I want pretty small just to disconnect these so I can redraw their edges. Remember, you always have to see the anchor points in order to use the magic scissors of the pencil. 
steps and you have to start on the path and end on the path. And if you just want to smooth something out, you can use the smooth tool. And then you can hold down command to get back to the last selection tool you used, which in my case is the small selection tool, which is the one I want. So now I'm just using the smooth tool. I'm not even using the pencil. Now here, this is the mechanical part of the, the helmet, kind of where the visor hinges. So I want this to look pretty circular, and right now it doesn't. So that requires some careful use of the pencil tool to round that back out. Here we have the edge of the visor coming into that hinge. So I want to sharpen that edge a little bit. Soften this one. Remember you're working on the inside and outside of the line. These are not strokes, these are fill pads. And you're just trying to get across your own version of Miko. Sometimes you gotta put corners back in there because when you soften it with live trace, it can soften hard edges a lot of the time. Here's another place I need the eraser. I need to erase, and erase it out. And so you can see I can do my work here to improve my digital inking and get nice clean vector line art, which is what we're all after for our coloring book spot illustration. Now the eye itself, I want to make sure that's nice and round. Nice and smooth. So to me, using that smoothing tool, whether you do it in PhotoP or whether you do it in Illustrator, is really pretty important for this kind of illustration. You don't want really jittery looking lines. When you need to separate paths from each other, you use that eraser tool. Sure, why it's not catching here. Very strange. Let me see. There we go. I was definitely starting and ending on the path, but maybe just I had too many things selected. So you can see that slight wobbliness that happened from my inks bleeding into the paper, I can correct as a vector. And I can make it nice and smooth. But it takes a lot of work. And digital inking takes as much work and discipline and attention to detail as traditional inking for sure. But the benefit is you get a perfect digital line art that we can use for lots of things after, including digital coloring behind it. So it doesn't need to have the quality control of your logos, but you still want to make it nice. Because you're going to be using these poster or these spot illustrations for poster illustrations with our next project. Okay, so I still have more to do, so it's a good time to save my progress. To remind you, the other tool I'll use for this is the blob brush tool found under the brush. And the blob brush tool can be set to smooth as well. You give it a size. I'm going to give a pretty small size. And then you're supposed to be able to have pressure sensitivity on the blob brush tool. And then it's my favorite tool to use for digital inking because you have pressure sensitivity with your tablet and you have the smoothness setting, just like in PhotoP. The problem is with this newest version of Illustrator 2021 and our tablets, which are two year old tablets, it's just the tablets don't have a driver yet that supports this newest version of Illustrator. So it's a tablet driver problem. But if you can get your tablet to work for pressure sensitive here, 
that's great. I'm going to be working with IT for it, but I think we have to just wait.